Affairs. I am your host, Christopher Brown. The Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, or SARM for short, is raising concerns regarding the profound staff shortages plaguing healthcare facilities across rural regions of the province. Joining us for this crucial conversation is Ray Orb, president of SARM. Now, SARM, as the voice representing rural Saskatchewan municipalities, has been actively advocating for solutions to address the healthcare challenges faced by rural communities. Now, at the forefront of this discussion is the urgent need to address the shortage of healthcare professionals, particularly nurse practitioners in rural areas. The Saskatchewan Association of Nurse Practitioners underscores the necessity of reinstating the Grow Your Own Nurse Practitioner program initially announced by the government in 2014. This program holds the potential to bolster the healthcare workforce in rural Saskatchewan by tapping into the pool of qualified nurse practitioners currently residing within the province. Now, as SARM prepares to engage in discussions with policymakers throughout the province during their upcoming spring convention in Regina, the urgency to address the healthcare crisis in rural Saskatchewan remains paramount. Now, the outcomes of these deliberations will not only shape the future of healthcare delivery in rural Saskatchewan, but also underscore the commitment of governmental authorities to prioritize the well-being of all Saskatchewan residents. Now, today's conversation serves as a pivotal moment in addressing the pressing healthcare challenges faced by rural Saskatchewan. This is Municipal Affairs. President Orb, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciative. I want to start by talking about the press release that uh, SARM issued on February 28th, and that was sounding the alarm regarding the state of rural health care in the province of Saskatchewan. Before we get into some of the sort of fixes that you're hoping the government will uh, address, can I ask you a pointed question? What do you see sure. as the state of health care in rural Saskatchewan today? Well, you know, I would say uh, the state we're in now, I think we have a lot of room for improvement. And I know, you know, the provincial government has brought in some good changes. You know, we're, we're seeing uh, we're seeing a better doctor recruitment, uh, a retention in some cases, and, and, and the same with nurses as well. But uh, we still see that there are some rural communities. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm talking about the... Uh, the rural and remote areas we have in this province where people have to travel a long distance uh, to get to health care. There's still being some issues out there. I know we've had a, a you know a series of uh, emergency centers that have been closed. Some of them uh, have been uh, opened up again just recently. And now we're hearing uh, there's one in, at uh, Wolseley, Saskatchewan that, uh, that uh, is going to be uh, staffed again. But the issue with... Uh, Getting staff is a recurring issue, and I, I know that's happening not only in Saskatchewan, not in rural Saskatchewan, but, but across the country as well. But the issue um, we're trying to get across to the province is uh, that uh, we need this to change, and uh, we have fairly regular meetings with the Minister of Health and the Minister of Rural and Remote Health as well, uh, saying that uh, you know we need to work together on this file. So I would say it's... It's uh, it's it has been improving, but we still have, I think, um, more changes that we'd like to see. That's why we issued the press release that we issued. Now, one of the uh, key solutions that SARM is advocating for, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but is for the Grow Your Own Nurse Practitioner program to be implemented again. What mm -hmm. is it about the nurse practitioners that you would want to see uh, addressed, and why do you why are you calling on the government to implement the Grow Your Own Nurse Practitioner program again? Well, we saw success from that program when it was implemented in 2014. Uh, you know, uh, the idea of getting people from your local area, of course, is really important to us because we feel we have a lot of talented people out there that, that actually could take the training, um, uh, come back into their into their own community, and 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 still live in that community and provide services to their community as far as healthcare delivery. We saw success. Uh, I think at the start of that program, you know, we had. We had um, over 100, 170. I think we had a, we have almost uh, doubled that though uh, over the number of years. As of 2023, we used a number of 328. But the issue with that is uh, we have some nurses that um, haven't been able to, uh, to find work or uh, 
you know, or, or have issues with traveling to go to work and things like that. So they've gone uh, to work uh, in other uh, facets of healthcare, I guess you could say. Uh, some of them working as registered nurses, which is obviously needed as well. But somewhere out there, we think about 10%. This is coming from the association itself that uh, has concerns about this. So we're trying to promote this. Some of that, I think, will take... It will take uh, SARM, our, our uh, sister organization, SUMA, as well. You know, we've uh, we've approached them on healthcare issues. To, you know, to talk to their board uh, and executive about it, about working together on this. I think we need to promote uh, rural Saskatchewan in a in a different way. Uh, we have to attract people from other provinces. We know that we have some strict issues coming from other provinces and nurses, but we have to make. Saskatchewan look more attractive because we feel it is attractive. It's a it's a, a, a good place to live, uh, and uh, the cost of living compared to a lot of other provinces is a lot lower. And so this should uh, this should cre create incentive. But we need uh, further incentives from the province as well to be able to not only attract these uh, nurse practitioners but to retain them as well. What type of incentives are you looking for? And I'm going to sort of poke the bear a little bit here, Ray, if you don't mind, but is it financial incentives? Is it bonuses? What type of incentives is SARM looking for the province to implement to retain and retract, attract uh, new nurse practitioners to some of these smaller rural communities that you represent as the president of SARM? Those are the kind of things that we're throwing out there. You know, we're mentioning things like uh, incentives for uh, relocation. And, you know, this is really important because uh, if someone has to move to a different location to live, it's uh, very expensive, as everyone knows that. Perhaps bonuses, not a bad idea as well to, uh, to get people into areas where we can't seem to attract people. And I think that's the issue because uh, there are some parts of the province where it's, it's harder to attract people than others. This could be um, an area that uh, perhaps uh, has a low population density. Uh, the community maybe um, doesn't have as much to offer as some other communities do. You know, one of the things uh, that our members always ask for is better connectivity, better, uh, you know, rural internet. Uh, we have some places in this province, actually a lot of places in the rural areas that just don't have good connectivity. And so we're trying to work, um, you know, with, with the province on that too. But those are the places we need to focus on where, uh, you know, we know we have, we have cities where people obviously prefer to live it's because, um, you know, obviously nurses, nurse practitioners can get jobs there, but we need to get them out of the city into the rural area, especially the smaller ones. What area of the province is most uh, underutilized right now? Are you seeing it in the north area that you want to see more nurse practitioners? Are you seeing it in more of the rural southern areas? Is there a particular areas that you hope that the province first starts to focus on? Or is it a carte blanche, you need to fix this across the entire province from border to border to border? Yeah, I, I think it's... Uh... It's kind of a it's kind of a smattering of of different locations around the rural. I don't think we could pick one area. I know northern communities have their own issues, of course, uh, attracting healthcare. Uh, you know, it's a good place to start, but we can't forget it also about the rest of the province, even the southern part of the province, the southwest. Uh, uh, southwest uh, part of the uh, province, obviously, you know, low density area. We don't have many people living. You can travel miles and miles, you know, and, uh, and not see a, uh, a ranch or a farm. And so uh, I would say it's everywhere in rural Saskatchewan. That's pretty broad perspective. Have you heard anything from the Minister of Health, the Minister of Rural Health, about potentially what's coming up in this upcoming budget around this uh, nurse practitioners? Or is this sort of a preemptive strike to say we need this to be talked about this upcoming session and prior to the next election? Yeah, yeah you know, over the last, well, healthcare is becoming more of an issue every year. I think, uh, you know, post COVID, you know, we still have people that have, uh, have health issues, uh, you know, because of that. And because I, I think our, our system uh, providing healthcare has been stretched to the limit. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but meeting regularly with the ministers, I mentioned that uh, we're going to be talking to them early next week uh, as well about uh, some of our ideas. And uh, I'm sure that we'll hear back from them about how they feel about that and about some of the other policies that they're trying to bring forward. Uh, but, 
this is part of a wheel. I've mentioned this before. It's like a cog in a wheel where we need to have all the healthcare delivery working together. We have emergency centers, we have doctors, we have uh, nurses that we uh, need, obviously. We need, we need nurse practitioners as well. They can do the job uh, in a lot of cases uh, that um, will help rural people at least get to the first step, you know, to be analyzed and to be referred uh, to a physician or to uh, uh, a center that can deal with uh, their particular healthcare issues. So uh, we're really pleased with the idea of having nurse practitioners. We just to make to, we need to make sure that they get out to the rural areas where there aren't any right now that need them, and that's I think the focus of this. Now, this is one spoke to use your metaphor as a wheel here. One spoke in the wheel that is the upcoming sort of campaign that uh, SARM is launching around the upcoming provincial election. We've talked about the government side of their response and what you're hoping from them. Have you had discussions with the other parties, the NDP, the Saskatchewan United Party, uh, or is it just working with the government right now because they are in power? We have had... uh... No discussions with any of the other parties, but we have had discussions in the past uh, um, about healthcare because I know that's uh, you know that's a cornerstone. I think of some of the uh, of the opposition of the official opposition is to provide better healthcare. But I'm assuming because our convention is getting close, uh, we have uh, the opposition leader speaking at our convention, and I'm sure she's going to address some of that. And that will spark further conversation as well. And of course, at our bear pit session, you know. Healthcare usually number one issues. I'm, I'm sure lots of our members are going to get up to the microphone and to uh, to tell the health minister and the um, rural uh, health minister uh, the issues uh, that they need fixed. And also we have the dialogue sessions as well, which is very helpful because that gets uh, the discussion started before the bear pit. If the government doesn't come to the table and utilizes more nurse practitioners in rural and remote communities that you represent, what's what's the issue that is going to face these rural communities, do you believe? Well, currently, you know, people just have to get in a vehicle and drive a lot further. And that's the issue, especially for seniors or, you know, people that don't have uh, ways of getting to the larger centers. Uh, you know, it's an added expense. It's an added inconvenience, but I think the concern as well, you know, we are uh, we are putting pressure on our on our EMTs and our paramedics as well to get people in when sometimes it could be prevented if they need to see a, a nurse practitioner, or a nurse or a doctor. Prior to that, it would be helpful. But uh, being away from a large center, uh, well, it's uh, it it makes people a bit nervous too, you know, when you're living out there, you know, I'm just thinking even in farm accidents, of course, um, you need to have the, you need some, have some kind of basic healthcare coverage. And I think that's what we're trying to focus on. Ray, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat about the issues that are going on. Before I let you go, I do have one follow-up question and that is sure. what else haven't we talked about, about this issue <laughs> that you want, you want your members who are potentially tuning into this or because we do have a lot of surprisingly listeners from Regina. So I'm assuming mm-hmm. someone's listening from the government. <laughs> what would you want them to know about this that we haven't talked about yet? Well, we touched uh, we touched a lot of you know different facets of this um, this issue I think but just the idea I think you know of extra have extra training and some extra incentives I think is is always a good thing I think that's a really good investment for the provincial government but as I stated earlier I think organizations like SARM you know SUMA of course a uh, very important uh, organization that's involved with this issue as well we need to we need to promote our communities a little a little better and to make sure that we can uh, attract these people and professionals into our community and keep them there and that's uh, that's an ongoing conversation that that we've had i think probably since uh, the inception of sarm uh, that healthcare has been an important issue are you are you more confident that something will get done because you have organization is like the, the Saskatchewan Association of Nurse Practitioners backing your call for more nurse practitioners in rural and remote communities? No doubt about it. And we did have them speak at a recent convention and uh, we, we got a lot of feedback from, uh, from that, uh, that uh, presentation, but it also gave, I think, our board of directors a chance to kind of absorb this and to realize this is an important organization, and these people are very important to Rural Saskatchewan. Ray, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Take care and have uh, have an awesome day. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from the issues on municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders on the cross-border interviews and our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed and engaged on the issues facing municipalities from coast to coast to coast. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.